To get the program underway, I would like to introduce to you the Interim Chair of the Department of Land and Natural Resources, Alan Smith. Thank you, Chris. To you, the stewards and very concerned citizens, aloha kakahiaka. I would like to introduce a person who's a great boss and who's your very humble servant, uh, the governor of the state of Hawaii, Ms. Linda Lingo. Thank you very much, Alan. Good morning, everyone. Aloha. First, uh, let me start by thanking all of you for being here this morning for this important event and to especially thank the Conservation Alliance for including me in such an important program that involves students from across our state. I was just given a copy of the anthology and I was sitting reading through some of the entries and it's extremely impressive students. I want to commend you. I look forward to uh, meeting you in person later on in the program. But I'm especially glad to be here because the future ability of our state to be good stewards, to be effective stewards, is our ability to communicate to the upcoming generation the importance. And I think they are the ones who can communicate on our behalf. If you read their entries, they really don't need help understanding why these issues are important. They, in fact, can be our emissaries and ambassadors to spread the word across the state. So thank you for making me a part of such an important event as this. I'm glad to be here at any time, but especially glad to be here with these students. Everyone in this room is aware of the importance of the environment, the importance of conservation. It's one of the greatest challenges and one of the greatest opportunities of our time more important in our state than in most places because of the fragile nature of our environment, because of the large numbers of people who continue to want to come here to our state to visit and oftentimes to stay. Conferences such as this one are critical in making progress on conservation issues and finding solutions to some of the challenges that we face. The very basic nature of the Alliance is one of partnerships, as well as the program that honors these students. It's, it's a partnership itself of the Conservation Alliance and the Pacific Writers Connection. I believe the longer, longer I'm in government, I believe this, that partnerships are the only way to achieve the level of conservation that our state needs, requires, and deserves. This audience is a perfect example of that kind of partnership. We have conservation managers, government officials, landowners, scientists, and students. I want to thank each of you that work day in and day out on conservation issues. And I want to thank my interim uh, director of the Department of Land and Natural Resources, Alan Smith, for his tremendous effort to come in and help us. And I don't say help me, because I needed a director, but help us in the state because we need leadership in this critical department. I want to thank him for being there when we needed him. 
I also want to recognize the former director who did such an outstanding job for all of us and ask him to say hello, Peter Young. Peter, you here in the audience? We have all collectively enjoyed tremendous success through partnerships. The Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument created one year ago was brought about through a partnership. It involved the entire spectrum of the community. It had extensive public input and even included the President of the United States. The result of all of your effort was the largest conservation area ever established in the United States and the second largest in the world. Early <laughs> Earlier this month, I had the privilege to sign legislation that will protect Kavai Nui Marsh in Kailua as the state's largest remaining wetland. This was another situation that required agreement and partnership between the state and the city governments, but it was the help of the numerous community organizations, some of which had worked for decades on that project that brought that about. In August, next month, the 26,000 acre Valkeleo Puna forest on the Big Island will be dedicated was transferred to OHA through the cooperation of the U.S. Forest Service, DLNR, and the Trust for Public Land. It was a 20-year process, which will culminate with the dedication on the Big Island on August the 27th, and I will be there with you, joining many for that occasion. Again, these are all examples of partnerships, and I am convinced not one of them or many others could have occurred without the help of many hands. The legislature a couple of sessions ago initiated the Legacy Land Conservation Program. Funds from the State Conservation Fund are used for the acquisition and protection of land with, with value to us as a community, either cultural, archaeological, or natural resource protection. There's a nine-member commission of experts and representatives from the counties that select these lands to be purchased. In June, $4.7 million was allocated to purchase six areas, including a 170-acre native hala forest in Hana, Maui, 234 acres with cultural and natural resources in Ka'u on the Big Island, 108 acres in Kunia, Oahu to preserve prime agricultural land. That was a, an easement. The state has also helped conservation on the North Shore in partnership with others. The protection of the 1,129 acre Pupukea Paumalu Coastal Bluff through a $7.95 million purchase. There were nine different entities that were a part of this effort, including federal, state, county, and private, and it will be managed as part of the State Park Reserve, forever protected. We have also sought significant increases in conservation and resource enforcement and park rangers because this is an area that's been focused on by the conservation community for a long time, that it's one thing to acquire lands, it's another to manage them effectively to protect the resources and to make certain that we have a level of enforcement required. We had sought 40 new positions for DLNR in this legislative session, and we got 25 of the 40. With my record, that's not bad. Uh, 25 out of 40. I would take that ratio and a lot of other requests that I made if I could get it. But it is going to allow us to increase enforcement and also to bring park rangers to sensitive areas such as Ka'ena Point on Oahu and Kealakekua Bay in Kona. I want to thank our Department of Land and Natural Resources for their efforts. I appreciate very much the dedication and the hard work of the DLNR staff, and I know there are many here today. 
They are always working day in and day out to protect and to enhance our cultural and natural resources. The leadership of Peter Young and Alan Smith have been critical in those efforts. I also had a chance this morning to talk with a former deputy in our land division at DLNR, Bob Masuda, and we also thank him for his efforts. Today, I've decided to use this event to make an important announcement, which is who will be the person who I will send down named to the Senate as the next interim director of the Department of Land and Natural Resources. I'm happy to say that Alan Smith has agreed to stay on with us in the interim as a deputy in land while we find the permanent land deputy, and that will give us important continuity. But I did feel that today's event was an, uh, an important one in conservation and environmental work, and it would be an exactly appropriate place to announce the new interim director whose name will go down to the Senate. As you know, after the process that took place during the last legislative session, in gratitude to all the people who had come out to support Peter Young's uh, reappointment, I asked many of those same people to help me to find the next director. We formed an outstanding 30-member search committee. They had tremendous credentials and they had an unbridled passion for our state. They represented a good balance of interests and they took their job very seriously. I think that they made excellent recommendations to me and I made a commitment to them that I would select from among the people that they recommended to me. It's with great pride that I announced to you today a person with a, a long history of environmental work and educational work, which is very apropos to today. Uh, I think she's here in the audience, the, the next uh, interim director, and she will start on Monday, Laura Thielen. Laura. Laura is currently the director of the Office of State Planning, and we will be and are searching and have been searching for an appropriate replacement, and we're certainly open to recommendations from anyone here today or anyone outside of this room. Laura has done an outstanding job in, in that position. She's a former member of the Board of Education, and I can tell everyone in this room that she is so excited about the possibilities and she looks forward to working with you. I hope you'll take time to talk with her today. Well, conservation means many, many things. One of the key things it means for me in my effort to improve our self-sufficiency as a state is conservation means how we produce our energy in the state. We need to focus on the renewable energy in a way we get focused on any major issue that will affect us for generations to come. It's especially important because of our isolation as islands, it should be obvious to anyone, we are too dependent on the importation of fuel sources. Our supply is vulnerable to disruption and the cost is money that's leaving our economy. Hawaii has an abundant supply of renewable resources for energy. Solar, wind, geothermal, biofuels, ocean thermal energy conversion, and wave energy. Expanding the use of renewables is a key focus for the remaining three and a half years of my administration. And a big part of our effort is something we in the government call leading by example. And what that means is not talking about conservation, but actually participating in conservation. Not talking about the need for renewables, but having an impact on the increase in the use of renewables. And to that end, we have decided to intervene in the docket before the Public Utilities Commission currently on this concept of wheeling. Wheeling being the concept where we can use the existing transmission lines of the utility company 
to transmit energy that's created from renewable sources, even though they are not the sources of the utility. So it's the government, and our state government is the second largest purchaser of electric power in the state of Hawaii. We are a huge customer, so what we think, what we believe, what actions we take will have an impact on this area. And what we're, and our decision to intervene is an important one, and I wanna make a distinction for you here. Usually, on behalf of the state, we have a, a consumer advocate, an office of consumer advocate, and they are automatically a party to the dockets. And they go in and they are supposed to represent the interest of the consumer before the Public Utilities Commission. But we have intervened as the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism as a part of our lead by example effort, which is to say that perhaps the interest of the government in this case may be somewhat different than the interest of the consumer. And you can see a situation where a decision of the PUC, while it may cost the consumer something more in the short run, in the long run for the government being the second largest purchaser, and remember the, the money we have to purchase energy comes from you because we have no independent source of revenue outside of tax revenue and fees, our interest may be different. And clearly our interest is the ability to purchase renewable energy and force it to be allowed to be transmitted over these existing distribution systems. So we believe this is a very important case to watch. Every county in the state, I believe, has also intervened in this case as a purchaser of power. And also I was talking to a, a company just this past week, a company that's involved in the, the proposing of a very large wind energy project, and they have also intervened in this case. This will be one of the most critical cases, in my opinion, in the history of our efforts to bring about additional renewable energy in the state because it's looking at the issue not of generating renewables, it's looking at the more difficult, critical, expensive issue of how do you distribute. We can create all the energy we want from renewables, but we've had a bottleneck because up until now, it's had to be with the permission of the utility company in order to sign these agreements to allow that energy to enter into the grid. So I think we're moving the discussion to a new place now where we're recognizing it's not just about the creation of renewable energy from sources that we have, it's how do we move that energy around the state to where it's needed. And I'm very, very excited about this effort. Laura and I have already had discussions about the role that the Department of Land and Natural Resources needs to play because a lot of the renewable sources are going to be on land that comes under the jurisdiction of the Department of Land and Natural Resources, which means under the public jurisdiction. And I want all of you to be a part of this effort and recognize there are going to be times when it's going to be, do we want renewables? Do we want the transmission of these renewables? or do we want to maintain a particular piece of land in perpetuity the way it is today? And I think it's a good subject to talk about. I think a whole conference could be built around this topic of renewable energy resources, how we produce it, how we move it around to where we need it. And I, as I say, I'm very excited about the potential in this field. Also to lead by example, the state is updating its buildings to become energy efficient. This means going in and retrofitting with performance contracting companies where they are paid the difference between what we used to pay for electricity and what we, and what we now pay after they retrofit these buildings. So that difference goes to the company. So the taxpayers, we don't pay anything to retrofit the buildings. They front all those changes in the air conditioning system, the lighting system, and they get paid off through the savings that we get on our monthly bills. And as I said, being the second largest user of energy. We use a lot of it and we spend a lot. We're also by department now getting a, a monthly readout of what the energy uses it, usage is from that department. So rather than saying the government, we know who the major users are. There are 108 buildings that are using 80% of the energy that we pay for. And the obvious major users in our state 
are the University of Hawaii and the Department of Education because by definition they have the most buildings. Also the university has the kinds of equipment and technology in the medical field that can use up very large amounts of energy. So we're starting to understand our usage a lot better so that we can come in and we can hold the amount of energy we use down or even decrease it through conservation. Conservation doesn't mean staying the way we are because conservation is going to take innovation to be successful. Our economy has been over-reliant on land development and the use of our natural resources for a long time. And so, perhaps ironically, in order to be successful at conservation, we must also be successful at innovation. We have to diversify our economy to focus more on technology, on science, on engineering, and I'm focused in the schools in a big way on that. And I believe if we're successful, it will lessen the impact on our environment. The Hawaii Innovation Initiative was not a one-year legislative package. It was part of a five-part, it is a five-part plan to really transform our economy from one that's over-reliant over on our lands, that uses our natural and cultural resources, to one that focuses on human capacity focuses on our students, a government that leads by example and continues to expand our international linkages to the global marketplace. Innovation extends to all areas of society, to conservation through the innovative partnerships that you've already exhibited, innovation in land management, and as is recognized today, innovation in education. These students are such an outstanding example of the young people in our state. They make me optimistic about the future and hopeful about the years to come. Thank you very much for inviting me here today to be a part of this important organization, this important partnership, and of this important event to recognize these students. I'm going to have the honor in a moment to be joined uh, by others on stage to present commendations to the students. But uh, before they come up to do that, I just want you to know that the Lieutenant Governor, James R. Duke Iona, and myself have proclaimed July 25th through the 27th, 2007, as Conservation Days in Hawaii, and thank the Hawaii Conservation Alliance members for their steadfast commitment to the stewardship of our island's environment. Mahalo. Hakali da ohu lewa ia e kalawa e haka ano ole ke ia ohu no ke no ke hakala la ke ia manu ika ohu ika ohi aha mau me ho aha mau ita le o kale hua pane pane mai pahai ke ia mamu e 